In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how you can introduce a video by assembling the first frame of it in puzzle pieces and then moving into full motion video. I saw this in a commercial and I thought, that's cool. How can you do that? So we're going to look at that process in this tutorial. Please look at the following example and then we'll show you how to do that yourself. I need to first start out with a puzzle piece, a blank puzzle like what you see on the screen. And when I went looking on the internet, I discovered that they're very rare, the free ones are. Most of them are for sale. And if you can't find a free one you can legitimately use, I'm going to show you at the end of this tutorial how you can create one for free using a free program called GIMP. That's what I did to create this one. So we'll start with that and put it on track number one. So now I have my puzzle background. Now I need something to put on top of the puzzle, a video. So I'm going to right click here and use all my downloaded options. And then I'll give myself some more room. And let's take this beach scene, this beach video, and put it on track number two. I'm going to go back here and go back to my media content. And now I have this. Now what I see is it overrides the puzzle. How do I make make it so I can see the outline of the puzzle pieces. I need to change the blend mode of the beach video. So I highlight the clip and choose tools above the timeline and then choose blending mode. It starts out with normal. I want to use multiply. and Click on OK. Now I see the black lines because they're darker. Now what I want to do is simply take the very first frame of the video and that's the one we're going to use to start with. So I move my playhead all the way to the left. I'll do control P to create a an image. I'll just call this beach one and now it will po populate in my media room. With the beach video highlighted I'm going to click on the tools above the timeline, go back to my blending mode and I'm going to make it normal again. And I can actually delete the puzzle piece if I want. And if I want to, I'm going to move the beach video up to track one. Now I'm going to take the beach image, the first frame, stick it at the front and make it adjacent to my video. So we go from the image with the puzzle background to the video. That's step one. Step two is to cut out some puzzle pieces. How do you do that? Well, you do that by using your masking tool. So I'm going to click on the beach one image and then from the tools menu choose the mask designer and now I'm going to create my first mask. I click on the icon at the very right, the custom selection mask and that will allow me to create a mask. All I need to do is move to the puzzle piece that I want to select and very carefully create a mask that matches the shape of the puzzle piece. I will pause the video while we do that. Now I have my puzzle piece selected. What I want to do is invert it. One thing I forgot to do that's very important. I'm opening up the bottom part. We need to make sure this happens at the first frame of my project. So I have to make sure that this marker is at the very first frame. And we're going to click on OK. OK, now our puzzle piece is missing. Let's assume we want a second puzzle piece out to start with. How do you do that? I'm going to go back into the Tools menu and the Mask Designer. To add a second from the Mask 1, you click to the button below it that says Add. That will create a Mask number 2. One thing you can do if you want to be even more precise, you see I wasn't totally accurate here, is you can just magnify your puzzle and move down to a, the second piece you want and then you can start to create your second mask by clicking directly on the lines uh, slightly magnified from before. So that gives you a little more precision. So I will pause again while we outline our mask number two. I would point out you can also go in later and you can modify the mask to make it more perfect by magnifying it and fine tuning it. We won't do that for the sake of time in this tutorial. Now I want to invert this. You notice I also need to make sure that I'm at the very first frame 
and then invert the mask. So now I have both masks available. I'll click on OK. And so now when I play my clip, I see that my still image has two blank areas, one for each puzzle piece. So how do we fill in the puzzles? The next step is to copy this. So I'm going to click on this and I'll right click and I'll choose copy. Then I'm going to go to track two, move the playhead to the beginning, right click and I'll do a paste. And we'll do the same for track three. You'll have to do this for as many different masks as you created. You can create up to five masks and that's the limit. So you can't do the entire puzzle, at least not at once. So here I have three different masks. Now it's going to get confusing. So what I want to do is right click on my first copy on track number two, right click on the timeline and say enable selected track only. So I'm only seeing track number two. So what I want to do now is highlight that clip, choose the tools menu and I go back into the mask designer. Now here I have mask number one on the upper right, the red one, and then I have the green one, which is mask number two. What I want to do is remove one of them. Let's take mask number two, click on that, click on the delete. All right, so now I only have this one mask. Now I want to turn off the invert mask. So now I only see this guy. I'm clicking on OK. So now this track shows this puzzle piece. We'll do more with that in a moment. Let me go to this next one and I'm going to do enable selected track only. We're back to track number three. Highlight that, choose my tools, back to mask designer. Now in this case, I want to remove the red mask. And so I'm going to delete that and we only have this one. I'll, I'll turn off the inversion. And there I have it. So now I have only this mask here and the other mask on the other track. Now the other thing I want to do is I want to make the masks move in. So I'm going to right click. I'll do enable all tracks. Now we should see everything like normal. But if I'm on track number two, let's take this one first. And what I want to do is I want to keyframe it. So I'll double click on it. So what I want to do is move next is to move to the place where I want it to fill the puzzle. So I want it to fill. Let's go in um, one second and 15 frames. Highlight this and hit 15. OK, now I'm going to set keyframes here too. Now I'm going to move back to the first keyframes. And now I'm going to take and move this out. I'll enlarge it and move it up. And so when I play this, watch what happens. It will start outside and fill the puzzle. Now we do the same thing with the next track. Double click on it, get into my pip designer. And then I also want to click here and minimize this so I have more room. I need to set keyframes. I need to start here. And I'm going to move in a second and a half and use the same keyframes. And then I'm going to move in three seconds. There we go. And three seconds is where it will be in place. I really don't need the first keyframes. I'll remove those. When the other puzzle piece is in place now, we're going to have keyframes here. And we're going to have this one off the screen. So I'm going to take and move it and enlarge it. So let's see what it looks like. I'm going to click on the OK button to get back to my main screen. And now as we play this, we're going to look on the screen and we're going to see that we have one puzzle piece come in, puzzle piece number two come in, and then we move right from that first frozen frame to the entire video. I'd quickly like to show you how you can create a puzzle blank puzzle PNG background to use in this kind of a project. I went to the Windows Store since I'm on the Windows platform and there I found GIMP, G-I-M-P, downloaded it and this is what it looks like when you open it. I'll click on the file menu at the top, then I'll choose new. Then I will choose my resolution. I want a 1920 by 1080. I'll just click on OK. Now the next thing I want to do is click on the filters at the very top and choose the render from the first drop down menu and then choose pattern from the second menu. Choose pattern 
And one that's off the screen, I can't show it to you because it doesn't pop up, is called Jigsaw. I'll click on Jigsaw. When I click on Jigsaw, you have a number that you can pick. I suggest not a lot of them. We could start out with a 5x5. Five five. I, I did a 6x4. And they can, you can choose to bevel the edges tightly or less, depending on what you like, and then click on OK. And here's an example. So if I want to use something like this, the next thing I do is click on the File menu. I'm going to choose Export As. It will take me to my file folder, and then all I need to do is type in the name of it. I can call this Puzzle 5. And I, I called it a PNG. And then on the bottom, there's an option. Let me scroll this up a bit. You can click on Export. And it will export that. I'll just click on Export again. And now I should have that in my file system. I don't even need to save this. I'll just close it out if I want to. And that is the easy way to create a puzzle background that you can use in the lesson we just showed you using the free program called GIMP.